All right. So we'll get started then, because I know some of you have to leave. I'm really, really, really pleased to see, uh, have had so many regist registrants. And so I'm just going to start by saying hello, salam, shalom, bonjour, azul, and welcome to my fellow Americans all across Africa. And I'm Elizabeth Myers. I'm also known by my Moroccan name, Tilila, which means freedom in Tamazight, the North African language that spans the, the entire of North Africa. <clears throat> so I'm an American lawyer based in Marrakesh, Morocco, and I serve as a democracy lead for DA Morocco, Democrats Abroad Morocco, which is an unofficial country non-committee. Uh, and I host something called the Tilila Report podcast, where I address, address issues such as life, liberty, justice, and democracy. So I'm so glad to see you here uh, at this happy holiday season and just in time to be kicking off a new voting year. So here's a basic road, roadmap for today. I'm gonna say just a few introductory words to set the stage for our discussion. And then I'm going to introduce some of our amazing volunteer leaders who are here with us today. And they may also offer some pithy remarks. That's with a TH. And I will also give you, our wonderful participants, from uh, what I believe is going to be, when everybody's here, 10 countries across the African continent, an opportunity to introduce yourselves and say where you are now and where in the US you vote. And then we can have a Q&A and an open discussion to round out our one and a half hour session. So let me start by saying, in three weeks on January the 6th, it will be one year from the violent insurrection that the former president incited his supporters to overturn the will of the majority of the American people. And the reason I'm bringing this up is not only that we're very close to the one year anniversary and, and whatever is being planned for that, but there's also new evidence this week from the bipartisan January 6th House Select Committee of a planned and funded seditious conspiracy that we've never before seen in our US history. A number of texts were released by the committee that were sent by members of Congress to the, chief of the, the, the former chief of staff, Mark Meadows of former President Trump that demonstrate a months long plot to steal the election and reinstall Trump. Uh, it included, this evidence included PowerPoints and legal memoranda from at least two lawyers with the roadmap to do that, including declaring a state of emergency and imposing martial law. There was also a war room in the Willard. Not even during the Civil War did we have a US president himself involved in trying to overturn the government. But we came startlingly, startlingly close to doing so, to losing our democracy. And it was only a handful of people's belief that in the democratic and peaceful transition of power that kept it from happening, the belief. I am not an alarmist nor a fear monger, but as a lawyer and student of democracy who has sworn at least five oaths to the US Constitution to uphold the US Constitution, I am afraid of what is to come, that what we saw on January 6th this year was merely the dress rehearsal. Democracy doesn't happen by accident. We have to renew it for each generation. And that's what President Biden said at last week's Summit for Democracy. But that didn't get a lot of coverage in the media. Democracy depends on people believing in it. And right now in America, nearly half the population doesn't. They believe the big lie that the election was stolen from Trump and that this is despite multiple audits, some have called them fraudits, like the, the ninja uh, audit and recounts in numerous battleground states, as well as states which Trump won that found no support for the claims of widespread voter fraud and not a scintilla of evidence produced in more than 60 court cases brought by Trump's lawyers. And I want to mention, because I am a lawyer and it's important that 19 of those lawyers have been referred to their state bars for possible disciplinary proceedings and facing loss of their licenses to practice law because of their abuse of the judicial process and breaches of their duties as officers of the court by bringing frivolous cases. 
And Trump's personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani's license has already been suspended. So of course, all that is bad enough, but what should be of great concern to Americans, to all of us, is the future. And the plot is... Con just, just her introduction there remarks. Is. There she goes. Elizabeth, we, we, us. you've been gone for about a minute or more for the rest of us. We lost your video. And you're, you're still on mute. You're, you're still on mute. Oh, yes. It always does that when you come back on. Okay. So let me. But your, let me your, intro, your intro is excellent. We, we want to know where, where do we vote? What state do we vote for you in? <laughs> I'm not running, believe me. It's, it's too dirty. I'd rather be clean from the sidelines and, and try and get people to be honest. <laughs> but, but thank you for that, Robert. Um, so, okay, uh, did you hear about the frivolous cases and the 19 lawyers losing their licenses potentially? Am I gone again? Oh boy. That's no. that's exactly the that's exactly the point where, where you dropped out. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so 19 of those lawyers that brought those cases are facing disciplinary proceedings and possible loss of their licenses, including Trump's personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, whose license has already been suspended. Now, if that isn't bad enough, what is of great concern and should be of great concern to all Americans and us is the future. And the plot is continuing in preparation for the next rounds of election in 2022 and 2024. Republicans are putting into place both laws and people that are going to make it harder to vote and easier for legislatures or state election officials to change the results of a vote for political reasons. More than 400 bills have been introduced and 19 states have already passed 33 laws. And many of these restrictions affect voters abroad. Well, this week, President Biden spoke to the country, uh, changing the focus of his pr priorities to say that preserving voting rights is the most pressing issue of this moment. And that's what we have to work on as Americans and as members or potential members of Democrats abroad, that everybody who is eligible to vote can vote and will have his or her vote counted. Um, today, I read a really insightful article in the non-mainstream press talking about a change that is happening in Joe Biden and our president right now. Now, here's an 80-year-old man <clears throat> and the oldest president we've ever had. And the writer said, Biden is becoming a genuinely promising leader who is thinking hard and well about how to run a modern society what it needs, its economics, its social contract. But his speeches don't get the ratings that they deserve because uh, uh, don't get the ratings that media want and so that they don't get the coverage. And he's also not as charismatic as Obama. He's basically boring to listen to according to this writer. And Biden's thoughtfulness and critical thinking, which unfortunately is sometimes marred by a longstanding speech impediment that he had to overcome as a child, are disparaged as senility or incompetence, whereas he's anything but that, and quite the contrary, stands to become one of the most transformative presidents of our lifetimes, if we let him and if we help him. But this writer also says Biden, Biden's presidency is being sabotaged, and that's true, not only by the usual Republican blockers and holder uppers, but even by some in his own party, and more significantly by the media and the pundits who are not interested in covering things that don't get ratings. And even more importantly, by a populace that is, as he says, too indifferent to care about a president trying to lead them out of the abyss. And finally, the, 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 the quadruple thing in the quadruple whammy is what he calls an incompetent communications team that is not getting out the message. Well, that may be a bit strong to say that, um, it's not off the mark because we have a Build Back Better agenda and legislation that is about lifting up millions of Americans and getting them back to work in decent paying jobs. It's about affordable childcare. It's about strengthening the infrastructure our country needs to operate effectively and fairly into the future. 
not just building bridges and roads, but building better internet and tech. And on five of the six indicators that affect ordinary uh, Americans, economic indicators, President Biden has outperformed each of the last seven US presidents. This is according to Yahoo Finance. And Yahoo Finance is pretty thorough. You look at the comparison, total employment, manufacturing employment exports, the S&P 500, and real GDP per capita, and he is he's outperformed the previous seven presidents. Only on the average hourly earnings is he comparable to those presidents. And when we ra raise the minimum wage, um, that will also probably be an outperform as well, just arithmetically another item the Republicans are against. So we need to get the word out to the voters. First of all, we need to get the word out that Trump didn't win. Second of all, that Biden's agenda is what our country needs to succeed. And third, the main point about today is to help people know that they can vote from abroad and how to do that. So I wanna turn now to a new effort that Democrats Abroad has been supporting, which is a new All Africa Committee. And we are, we have the leaders with us on this, on this uh, Zoom, some of them. We're focusing on Africa and the thousands of American voters who live here. Um, we had our Mankala Africa event back in June. It was a kind of orientation about the organization Democrats Abroad, what it does and how it works. And so I wanna just take a minute to, um, to welcome our, our leaders who are on with us. Uh, and I'm just going to call on you because that's the most efficient way to do it. And I know that a couple of you are gonna to have to leave. <clears throat> so if you don't mind, I'm gonna start with A for Adam and ask you to say a few words about why you're involved in this Africa committee uh, effort which I hope we'll, we'll have the final imprimatur and approval for in January. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, thanks, Elizabeth. I was hoping you were going to call on me as V for Vickers at the end, but uh, I'll take it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, Beverly, Katie, Colleen, Kevin, I think you're the people who are new, who I haven't seen before. So, uh, Welcome to uh, uh, Africa Committee event, and and especially uh, thanks to Elizabeth for you know organizing this just on our own. Just, just, just getting this done, it's growth. Thanks a lot, Elizabeth. Look, uh, uh, I'm 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 for, for my sins. Uh, these guys have rounded on me and forced me into the GOTD activity. So the reason I mentioned your name is because I've written them down. <laughs> uh, you'll, you're, you're, you're probably already engaged, but uh, what to do today is just really encourage you for all the Americans that you know, whether they live in Africa or they don't, but especially those who live in Africa, I'd love for you to recruit them and uh, bring them on board for our get out the vote uh, activities. GOTV is such a big deal, and it's the it, it it is the without a doubt, without a doubt, the most certain way that that we can get it right. Um, we we will. One of the great things about Democrats abroad is that they have processes, systems, people to help make sure that Americans can get registered, so that you don't run into those brick walls that. It, been erected in so many states, even in my state, Kansas. And, and I've got a friendly board of elections. So, you know, uh, we, we, we need your help. We'll be calling on your help. Uh, we'll be calling for your help. Uh, you can always get in touch with us through any of the many ways that you get in touch with Democrats abroad. But certainly one way is right through Elizabeth. So you can respond back to her. And, uh, and, and so we're looking forward to coming back to you and asking for your help. Just if nothing else, just
getting on the phone and just talking. For Great. Thank you, Adam. Uh, who do we have next? Robert, would you like to say a few words? Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Elizabeth, great job. Thank you for uh, pulling this together. Uh, it's always uh, good when we keep doing these kind of things because it, it keeps the momentum flowing, even during the holiday. So thank you very much. Pleasure. Uh, uh, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, I have the uh, uh, auspicious duty of serving as director of staffing uh, for this illustrious committee. And that's quite a challenge uh, because the continent is huge. There's a lot of Americans there. And if we, if we did a survey, we'd probably only find half of them, if not that many. However, we know that WhatsApp is a, is a great tool. So it's, uh, we've actually already started is encouraging people who are living on the continent uh, there are Americans, there are voters, may or may not belong to Dems abroad, but we're encouraging them to come to us and express their interest in forming a WhatsApp group because we know it's a very effective uh, tool for communication, uh, doesn't cost you anything. And uh, I think for the most part, people have given up on Gmail and email and gone to WhatsApp, even for serious business uh, <laughs> uh, transactions. So. Um, uh, we're encouraging uh, mass participation. And the reason we're doing that is because we, uh, we've been on the continent for since uh, 2020, I'm sorry, 20, let's see, uh, 1996, uh, South Africa, uh, um, uh, since uh, 2000. Um, uh, and uh, we've seen a lot of transition amongst uh, Americans, even in the United States. There are hundreds of uh, Americans that are very committed to Africa who uh, have, have pretty much got in positions where they go back and forth. Africa has a tremendous transient population of, uh, of business people and, and uh, all types of, of people who do various things. In any event, we are looking to uh, uh, basically move people into the position of not only, you, you know, this thing is not just about voting. Uh, in this season that we're in, it's also about serving. Uh, there's a lot of service that we can do to help the democratic machine abroad, and particularly the democratic machine in Africa, uh, which has been challenged for a number of reasons over the last couple of decades to, to really come together and organize. But I think we're at that point now, and it's a good season. Uh, it's an illustrious season for us, and so we're looking for more people who want to serve. Uh, Adam has already mentioned GOTV, but there are a number of other things. That you can do everybody, but the question is also where you serve. Take care. Thank you very much, Robert. So we have two other committee members, uh, Brad and Robin. Brad from South Africa, do you, you want to say a couple of words briefly? <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, thanks, thanks a lot um, for putting this together. Extremely sure important. Um, we are really, really uh, excited to have everybody on the call. The uh, Africa Committee is is uh, purposeful, and we have. Um, specific goals uh, once you have a look at our charter our mission statement specific goals we're trying to achieve and um, as a uh, country committee um, in South Africa I'm extremely excited about getting the whole continent on board with DA so uh, those are my brief comments but um, I'm sure we'll chat again thank you so much for Thank you, Brad. And we also have uh, two folks from Kenya with us. We've got Robin, uh, who is the, the uh, committee chair of Kenya. We've also got Beverly Lax, who I did not know is their counsel. I'm really glad to know that. Robin. I think Kenya wins the prize. We have Kevin on also. Oh, that's right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so 
you said mobilize and I, I'm sorry, not Beverly, but um, Elizabeth for pulling us together. It's always a, a good time. Even I, I like the idea of this, us just doing these regularly. And um, as, as, as Bishop men, mentioned a moment ago, we dance with whoever shows up. It just continues to be a chance for us to um, introduce and welcome new people to what we're doing here across Africa. Um, glad to see all of my colleagues here. Um, I know that there's, there is um, solidarity um, with other DAs across Africa, and we are working to, um, to, to strengthen Kenya and get ready for 2022. And um, it's just good to, I don't think I've met Katie. Katie, have we met? Um, but it's good to be here. And, and yes, we, we look forward to continue to build up um, the Africa Committee um, as, as so we can all be strong together. Thank you again, Elizabeth, for hosting My pleasure. this and, event. All right, and, and thank you, Robin. Um, so uh, unless Beverly, you, you wanna say a word or two, um, I'm gonna go back to my remarks and kind of finish up the, the formal bit of the program and, and then we can have a, a meet and greet as this is billed. <laughs> oh, okay. Shall I just wait for the meet and greet? Sure. And it looks like Katie's leaving. Thank you so much for coming, Katie. Appreciate it. Yeah, so let me, let me just go back to uh, my formal remarks here. Um, so uh, it's it's kind of it's kind of strange to be making a pitch, you know, to all, all Democrats abroad people, or mainly Democrats abroad people already. But um, you know, I think a lot of people want to get involved politically, but just aren't sure where to start. And so, with Democrats abroad, as um, as everybody has said, we there it's a global organization that has all kinds of resources uh, and people around the world representing and organizing Americans. And so we're hoping that um, we can ask folks to make an impact with us. And in the last few months, leaders throughout Democrats Abroad have been really prepping hard for the GOTV effort for 2022 and beyond, which is GOTV meaning get out the vote. And so we've had training in phone banking, volunteer recruitment, the tech and electronic platforms that we use to run meetings with hundreds of people around the globe. We've had media training. We've, we're making sure we keep members who are about to expire uh, in, their, in their membership when we don't hear from them in four years. Unfortunately, they have to be taken off the books. And I know in Morocco, we have 44 people and I have a list of those and I'll be reaching out to them over the next few weeks in the hopes of keeping them uh, amongst our ranks, assuming they're still um, resident abroad, Americans resident abroad. And finally, um, Democrats Abroad is really focused now on strengthening and making more effective use of our global media, because that has really been, um, that, that is the mainstream media, and I'm in it. Uh, <laughs> I'm a for former editor-in-chief of a magazine in Washington, D.C., and I see it. There's uh, ratings are what counts, and that's not what America needs. So Democrats Abroad helps Americans, re regardless of party, to exercise your right to vote, and voting is a fundamental constitutional right that is the absolute bedmark of democracy, sorry, bedrock <laughs> of democracy, and there's lots to be done. So um, as uh, Robert said, uh, we have WhatsApp groups that we're developing. We have some that already exist. We're developing more. Um, you can check out Democrats Abroad Morocco's short vote from abroad videos in English, Moroccan, and Arabic on our Facebook page. You can make sure, this is an important one, that your Democrats Abroad membership and contact info is up to date. And you can volunteer. And we'll take as much or as little time as you may have because there's always something to do. We need people with all different kinds of talents, graphic design artists, communicators, IT people. We need people people too. Social media posters and managers. We need people to man and woman the phone banking campaigns. 
and we do try and make it fun. So it's not all work. We do oftentimes, uh, when we have things in person, central uh, center them around food, which is fun. Um, so not only is this a, an uncertain time in our history, it's a really exciting time to get connected with fellow Americans around the world to make a change and strengthen our uniquely American democracy, which is not very good, but it's better than anything else according to a very famous American, by making sure Americans around the globe can vote and that our voices are heard back home. So um, hopefully I'm, I'm still with you guys, looks like, looks like I am. So <laughs> great. So if there are, oh, hey, Jim, didn't see you join. Um, are there any questions? Um, uh, and then we can, you know, if there are any questions, we'll try and answer them, have a discussion, um, tell us, you know, who, who you are, where you vote, where, where you are and where you vote kind of thing. And we'll just have a, a nice relaxed discussion. So I'm going to, I'm going to call on uh, Colleen because, um, <laughs> because I've been I showed connected. up late. <laughs> no, no, because I've been connected with you, I think for like four years, according to LinkedIn, LinkedIn. And uh, <laughs> and I don't think we've ever met. <laughs> no, I think I there was another lawyer who lived anyway. <laughs> um, so hi, um, I'm Colleen. I live in Morocco in the capital Rabat. Um, I didn't really know what I was getting into by coming here, so it's really <laughs> nice to listen to everyone talk. Um, the reason I'm interested in doing more is because I run a study abroad program here and I've just kind of been ad hoc helping students vote from abroad since 2016 when we all kind of were like, oh no, maybe they should all register. We have high school students who are registering for the first time and it's really confusing for them mm -hmm. to figure out, you know, their county, their state. Um, we have, you know, uh, socialists, Republicans, Democrats, Tea Party people, I, I don't ask, I just register um, with our students. And then I also have a lot of connections in the kind of younger expat community here and people like myself who are kind of become immigrants as opposed to going back and forth. Um, so, and I, I really would like to help, like Robert, I think you said with uh, WhatsApp, I think it's a really unique opportunity um, I work for Emmet East, which is uh, a huge organization that has offices all throughout the Middle East and North Africa. So there's a lot of opportunities there and I have connections in all other kind of study abroad organizations. So that's kind of why I'm here, but I'm interested to hear what else is out there and just learn about who everyone else is. So that's bye. really great. That's really, so you, you've already been fulfilling a need that you see in your students. Um, and one of the uh, tools that we use is a nonpartisan votefromabroad.org website. Yeah. And I'm sorry if I'm there. Yeah, great. Yeah. 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 And, and, and also when I was reaching out to Moroccan, uh, not Moroccan, to American uh, organizations in Morocco last year, that was what we touted, that we're not mm. looking to do this on a partisan basis. We want to help people vote no matter what party affiliation they may have. So that's that's really important. Yep. And yeah, we, un undoubtedly we will uh, find a place for you. Um, I've developed a, um, a volunteer form that you can fill out. Um, and it kind of gives me, gives us a sense of what areas you are not only interested in, but you have experience in because there's so many different things that we do as, as volunteer organizers in helping people. And, um, you know, I'm a lawyer, but a lot of other skills come into play, um, including, you know, doing the graphics and stuff. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Try. So, I'm not a graphic designer. But yeah, no, no, we'll, not, we'll you know. find your niche. We, I, I assure yeah. you, we will find your niche. <laughs> so, Beverly, mm -hmm. did you have your hand up? Oh no, I was, I was waving to Colleen. Oh, <laughs> I was just saying hi. Okay, but if you want to say say a few words, go ahead. Oh, okay. 
Well, I'll introduce myself now. I'm Beverly, Beverly Lacks, and I am the counsel on the Democrats Abroad Kenya uh, Country Committee. I am not a lawyer, um, but uh, I, I find the position quite interesting. Um, I like questioning things, so I just thought, um, let me just jump in there. I vote in California. I've been in Kenya for 36 years. Um, yeah. I've been a bit disconnected in, I'd say, the last 10 years, but I've been sort of focused on um, Kenya because things are not quite right there. And so um, uh, that has been uh, a great experience in terms of um, you know, following up on rights, asking questions, uh, uh, putting people to task in terms of, well, why are you saying this? Why are you not? So it's, it's yeah, it's it's been wild, but it's been um, uh, very educative. I'll put it that way. Yeah. Marvelous. Anything else you want to know? Or I'm, I'm good? No, that's a long time. Well, you, uh, you're uh, working with uh, Kenya. Uh, and so um, we, we've already been uh, subtly noted that we can't poach you uh, to some of the other processes. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm available have, uh, and willing. Uh, if, all right, all right. But we'll we'll we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll go through the uh, command command quarters. <laughs> so oh, I forgot to ask though. I forgot very to ask excited. both Beverly. I'm very excited. I'm very Sorry. excited about Colleen. Um, uh, she has a wealth of. Uh, of uh, skill sets that we could use. Um, um, yeah. uh, I know yeah. I know that Adam can use her use her very effectively in what he's doing with GOTV. <laughs> that seems to be a hot button. And um, I, I'll try to. Uh, I would love to get you involved with some of the stuff that we have uh, going on for WhatsApp because we need a, a small team that will essentially cover the continent, and we have an aggressive goal of having at least fifteen groups set up within the next month or so. Um, across various circles because uh, we don't necessarily uh, have to uh, organize country committees or transnationals right away. What we have to do is communicate and get some work done. Um, and so uh, um, I, would, I would put you in for, with uh, Adam quickly with GOTV. Otherwise, he and I would have to have a standing MMA match uh, televised or streamed live across the globe. Um, so, uh, um, uh, welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. Thank you. And I forgot well, to ask you, you where you vote, Colleen and, and Beverly, unless you said it and I missed it. Uh, I voted for a long time in Wisconsin, but now I vote in Michigan. I kind of register where I feel I'm needed most. So it's been Michigan for a couple of years now. All right. I have one parent in each place, and yeah, so right. I, I vote in California. California Hill County, yeah. Well, one of the few states that has enacted some voting laws that make it easier to vote. Yes, <laughs> that's right. Colleen, Colleen, I've I've stuck our uh, our. I, I I don't know if you're a member of mm -hmm. DA yet. I've I've stuck the you know join join DA uh, link in the chat, so. I think I am, I'm on like seven mailing lists for oh, okay. women, LGBT, youth, like anything that I- Okay, you're, 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 you're there, I think <laughs> you're there. <laughs> <laughs> That's how DA is, yeah. I, either the, yeah, it's, it's either full force or nothing. So you're, you're there. <laughs> Great, thanks. So um, can we maybe hear from Kevin? Kevin, are you still on with us? I don't know that we've met in person yet. I have seen your name a lot, though. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Yeah, uh, I'm here. I'm still online. Uh, I, uh, I showed up for the uh, eggnog, but uh, Adam <laughs> didn't bring it. I should. I should it's my fault. It's my fault. <laughs> so, you know, so. Uh, 
Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, nice to be with you guys tonight. I'm battling a flu. Hopefully it's just the flu. There's a big flu going around in Nairobi uh, or throughout Kenya right now, but particularly Nairobi, uh, in addition to a 23% uh, positivity rate in, in COVID uh, in the last two days. So uh, hopefully it's just the flu. Um, but anyways, um, <clears throat> try to get tested by tomorrow uh, to rule out COVID. Uh, in any case, uh, I am, what am I? I'm a native Rhode Islander from Providence, Rhode Island, but also grew up in the suburbs of, of Massachusetts. And uh, so New England boy, uh, schooled in Ohio, Ohio Wesleyan, yay. Um, and- uh, All right now. I've lived in, uh, I, <clears throat> so I've, uh, let's see, I, I currently vote in Florida, I've registered I'm registered there because I use Florida, which is my parents' home address for tax purposes, so I don't have to file state income taxes. Uh, so that's a nice thing. Uh, but also because I, 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 uh, I, I uh, what's the word? Uh, I'm, my head's so clogged, I can't even think of it. But I, I negate one of my parents' votes for one of, you know, Republicans. Uh, my parents are unfortunately Republicans, but... Um, and we still somewhat talk uh, to each other. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so I, I currently vote in, in, in Florida, though the last time I lived in the US, I lived in uh, California, uh, Los Angeles, uh, Santa Monica area, Venice Beach. Um, <clears throat> but uh, been living in Kenya for the last 12 years, have lived in sub-Saharan Africa for now, it's about 22 years total. Um, Burundi, Madagascar, studied down in South Africa for a bit, uh, Congo, uh, DR Congo. Um, so yeah, that's me. And uh, I'm the vice chair of the, 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 the new kids on the block. Are we still the new kids on the block, Robin? I guess we still are. I don't know. Has there mm -hmm. been any committees that have been added to Democrats abroad since Kenya in July or August? Um, if, if not, then we are still the new kids on the block, I guess. Yeah, I think that's right. At, at least not in Africa. Yeah, well, definitely. Okay. But uh, I, I'm not I'm unaware if any other country committees have been established anywhere else. I am. And um, yeah, just I'm interested. I, I had joined the uh climate change committee which sort of i don't know what happened to it sort of got disbanded or something um they they, they i think they they maybe need some new leadership i'm not sure i haven't heard an update lately um if anybody knows um i'm i'm an environmentalist i do environmental consulting here in kenya um and um what else yeah that's about me yeah Thank you. Excellent. Nice to meet you virtually. I'm trying to wear my mask in the house uh, so I don't in, in get anybody else sick. <clears throat> Good man. Well done. Yeah. Well, thank you for introducing yourself and being with us. Uh, let's see. We The only person left, I think, at this point who hasn't said anything is Jim Mercero, who I had the pleasure of talking with this morning and uh, about helping to clean up our database, our list of um, folks who are about to expire next month in Morocco. So Jim, are you, are you with us? You're, at, you're on mute. Looking for the, <laughs> looking I, for the off mute. There you go. I, I need the t-shirt. You're on mute. Um. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, you'll be happy to know uh, we, we now have a formal uh, caucus uh, called the Climate, get the whole name of it, hold on a sec, I can tell you, uh, da, da, da. environmental, ba, da, da. hold on a second here, yeah, it's called the Environment and Climate Crisis Council, that is our latest caucus at uh, Democrats Abroad. I think that was just kind of um, became a formal caucus with uh, the last um, the last uh, XCOM meeting, global XCOM meeting. So you are you're 
now you're up to date. That's the last caucus. And Kenya is the last um, uh, country committee. Um, I am Jim Ursero. I have been around DA for a while. Um, I joined in 2006 here in Spain, but was kind of like a lot of people uh, who are working, not very active until I retired. And I jumped in in 2013. Um, and I was for a while the Secretary of Spain. And then later on, I was the chair of Spain for the last four years. And now I'm helping our, um, our regional vice chair, um, uh, Jen, uh, as, uh, as a deputy to her. And the, the idea is to try to help people help our various country committees get up to speed on um, technique of how to do things um, to be able to answer questions about, say, um, how to keep your membership list uh, current, or at least within the last four years. Uh, Democrats abroad has this policy that if we haven't had some form of contact in four years, uh, uh, the person is no longer considered an active member. They're still kept on the list um, and they still get emails and such, but they're not considered an active member, which basically means um, they're not in the country committee's count. Um, the country committee count um, determines the level of representation that we have as a country committee um, in the global group. Um, for example, um, probably the largest one largest country committee, I believe, is uh, the UK, followed by Canada, uh, followed, I think, by France or Germany. Um, so it's, it's based on your, your uh, active membership. Um, right now, um, we're in, a, in the mode of validating or trying to reach out to people who are more than four years uh, that we've had no contact with. Um, and so we can, so that we can keep them as active members. Um, of course, um, uh, many people come and go. Uh, people uh, for business or for the, probably the biggest turnover is in academia. Uh, a lot of we have a lot, a lot of students who pass through uh, Democrats abroad. Uh, uh, just Spain alone has about thirty thousand young people who, who study here at one point or another in the course of a year. Um, I learned an interesting little factoid not long ago after doing the student work for the last seven years, um, is that the spring semester is the busier semester than the autumn semester because it's easier when you return home or when you, when you do the spring semester, you don't have to worry about housing when you get back if mm. you've been in the autumn. And the other uh, thing is, a lot, a lot of kids like to participate in very kind of part of the university. Um, uh, one of the things that uh, Democrats Abroad has excelled at and that is at technology, the technology of getting people to vote. Um, vote from abroad started off as a fairly clunky tool, um, but right now it's pretty, it's pretty state of the art. If you are, I, I find when I go in with students, for example, um, they ask them to pull out their, their phone and establish a, an internet connection. Um, things like county are answered for you based on the zip code very often. Um, so it's, we, we really are kind of like taking it hopefully to a new level. Um, also, when you, when you fill in the form, um, it's going to give you the address and the name of the uh, local election official uh, for where you have to mail back your absentee ballot. That, that kind of that level came about in the last uh, uh, four years, mostly in the last two years. Um, we take our data from, from um, the Federal Voting Assistance Program, which is based out of the Pentagon. But we find very often they're not up, as up to date as we are. Um, we have a few people in our GOTV team who um, uh, make it a point of, you know, if, some, if an issue comes up, 
they get on the phone and call and find out exactly who we need to be in touch with and what the last rule is and all that kind of stuff. Um, they sort out that information. Four, three, four years, three years ago, we took vote, vote, or rock, vote from abroad inside before we contracted with a third party um, overseas vote foundation to run our vote from abroad platform. But we took it home and uh, our own team uh, re redid the whole thing uh, because one of the things that we wanted to do that we were frustrated with was to be able to have a vote from abroad in other languages. Um, so we immediately got it into Spanish. Not that it particularly helps Spain, but it certainly helps with our outreach to um, many of the Latin American countries where a lot of folks have come from uh, to work and then return home uh, to, their, to their native land. Um, or more often than not, we find they're a special kind of, a, of, a, of an immigrant. Very often they, they keep their foot in both lands because if they've had, had a family in the US, the grandkids may not wanna go back home to the homeland, but their grandparents definitely wanna stay in contact with the kids. So um, they kind of keep their feet in, in the two countries. And we're finding at DA that um, having some of the tools in Spanish make, makes the, the process of uh, easier for them to keep their, their uh, voter registration status current. Um, so that's one of the cool things that we do with, uh, with our Vote From Abroad um, website. Um, the other thing that we'll be offering in the not too distant future are classes or kind of an online thing about um, the current status of um, federal postcard application, what, what's new, what we need to be looking at um, for uh, 2022. There's been a few changes, nothing radical, but um, it's always nice to get a refresher so that we can help you know, people with accurate uh, and timely information. Um, I was really happy to hear, Colleen, that you made a point of finding uh, your registration in Michigan. Um, um, and hopefully you have some link to Michigan uh, along the way because that uh, becomes a, an issue if, if your ballot is checked, questioned. Um, no, she lives in, in but, but, but you know. So if if there's a clear link, and the the rule is the last place you lived, that's the rule. Um, but a lot of us um, have family in other places, and we very often end up using that address. Uh, that's usually the biggest question that comes up: Where do I vote? Um, so we'll be having a kind of an update on that. Um, I am a Florida voter. Um, mostly because 2000 just absolutely ticked me off. And when I had an opportunity after my sister moved, I registered in Florida. Um, and then I subsequently bought a place in Florida and then sold it. But I'm a Florida voter and um, I've been known to go back there and do voter registration uh, when we have uh, you know, the opportunity. Um, please feel free to ask any questions and we'll see between uh, Jen and I, maybe we can even answer them. Thank you. Wonderful, thanks so much, Jim. And you, you, you've been very helpful to me as well. And I see we've got Jen who has just joined us. Um, I, I think, I don't know if Colleen knows her. I think the rest of us on the phone do know her. <clears throat> Regional Vice Chair for our entire region that covers Europe, Africa, and the Middle East. So she's a pretty important person. Do you wanna say a few words, Jen? Hi, Colleen. I think I've written you a couple of emails recently, if I'm correct. Yeah, thank you for answering that vote volunteer survey. That's really great. Um, yeah, it's nice to see everybody tonight. I hope it went well. Sorry, I'm calling in so late. Austria has been, I live in Vienna, Austria. We've been in lockdown for the last four weeks. So this was the first Saturday that anybody could go shopping. <laughs> so uh, oh, wow. I had some catch up to do for Christmas shopping. I had to buy some Christmas wrapping paper. But anyway, yeah. Um, I don't know what all has been going on. If anybody has any questions. I mean, one uh, 
that uh, we've been doing, we're working on expiring members right now. So this is something that Bradley knows. So all the country committees have to do this. And in the past, it's been um, that somebody from IT would sort of do all of the expiring members from um, non-country committees. And this year I thought, okay, it's why don't we get people actually getting in touch and getting activated within their own countries. So there are a few different people who have raised their hand to help uh, in this process, which is always really appreciated. Um, and so, and hopefully that will. Yeah, and one of the things that resonated with me. I, uh, oh, sorry, Jen, I think I have a lag. <laughs> Well, what, okay. one of the things that Jim, Jim said uh, was a language issue and, and preparing stuff in Spanish is important. Well, I found when I was trying to reach out to voters here, that we have a lot of Moroccan Americans who've come back from 20, 30 years in the States. And one, they don't even know they can vote. And two, their, their English language is not, uh, it, it's not that easy for them to deal with the systems, to deal with the, the instructions and all of that. So one of the videos, a uh, couple of the videos that I did last year were in, in Moroccan Darija and then another one in Arabic that we were gonna use for the Middle East. Um, not totally, but, the, but a lot of the important points to try and, and reach people you know, in, their own, in their own language. And I don't know what your language facility is in Morocco, but any, any Moroccan or Arabic you have is really useful. Yes, good. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. So I, I, oh, and bad French too. Cool. All right. I, I have, I have decent French, but bad Arabic. <laughs> so, and this so, is actually something, Elizabeth, that on the, um, on that volunteer survey, I asked the question about language. And so there are a lot of people, I think, um, that live in Egypt, for example, with Arabic. That, so this is something that I think we can definitely find people, you know, to, it's a really good idea to make sure that the stuff is in these other languages, uh, especially yeah. when we're pinpointing it, that might be a great project to focus on, especially with Facebook ads, as we're, as we're moving into Facebook ads and things like this. So maybe that would be a project that we could get going and work on. Colleen, yeah. how, did, how did you hear about Democrats Abroad? I'm always interested how people hear about uh, it. I, some listserv was put on something. I think I, honestly, I think I donated like $5 to a campaign and got put on like the huge, like every time anyone is a candidate and I, like even I'm Bad O'Rourke emails now. I'm like, I, I finally do some LinkedIn for a while, and I just meet a ton of Americans here in the capital of Morocco. So, um, yeah, I felt like uh, I I have a lot of friends who volunteer back in the states, but I felt disconnected. I think someone said that earlier too, and so was like looking for a way to do it. And that's my nephew. That's awesome, though. Great. Well, good. Well, I see we've got Monifa on as well. Do you want to say a few words? We've been kind of going round robin. Uh, round robin. Sorry, Robin. Oh, yes. <laughs> we did. We did Robin already. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I am uh, Monifa Pendleton. I actually live in Dakar, Senegal. And I'm a part of this wonderful team that is mobilizing for Africa. And so I um, work with Elizabeth and Robert and Robin and Jen, and we are forming, you know, things to mobilize people in Africa, get out the vote, also really just connect with other Americans to make sure that they participate and continue and recognize the, the power that we have, even the uh, without living in the U.S., we can still be active and see our country, you know, progress um, and, and elect people that share our values. So, yeah, that's me. I'm not dressed up for this. I actually have to switch over to my phone in a few minutes, but I, 
since I'm home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's okay. Oh you, oh, you blew it now. You blew <laughs> it now. <laughs> No, no, no. We're we're wrapping up anyway. I think you know we've we've had uh, we've had a great discussion. I think and um, a lot of ideas, a lot of um, sort of reports on what Democrats Abroad is doing. And uh, I think the future uh, for mobilizing our volunteers is bright. Um, and uh, so and hopefully people will take the importance of the moments that. Joe Biden just talked about this week shifted his focus from economic to democracy and that's where we are right now and we are in the forefront of that battle to preserve our democracy so I think having said that unless anybody else has anything to add don't hear anything I I think we can be adjourned a little early so thank you all for participating I'm going to make Wait, hold on, Elizabeth, I'm going to make no, a little ahead. pitch. So sure. I don't know if anybody has gotten this um, or heard this. So global, DA Global, um, we're doing a big sort of move to try to get sustaining donors. So what's happened is that a lot of, and I don't know if this has already been touched on this meeting and stop me if it has, but a lot no. of um, DA gets a lot of donors, like, you know, one time or, you know, something like this, or maybe big donor or something. But what we what we've realized is, is that, you know, we don't really have the foundation for sustaining donors of like five, 10 bucks a month that we really know, okay, we've got this certain amount of money that we can count on every month coming in. And so this is something for, you know, you, for people in your circle that are Americans, you know, if they're looking for something, a way of really making a difference, instead of giving five bucks to Beto work, you know, or, or, and with, you know, and yeah. also, but, um, so this is really makes a difference with what global spends the money on. And it's a lot of it is we'll be targeting all of the battleground swing state voters coming up. So from starting in March, so we're starting in January, we'll be calling for the March primaries. North Carolina, Texas, Georgia, Wisconsin, all of these, New Hampshire, all of these states, we pay for, so we pay for that for all of the country committees because the country committees can't pay for that themselves. Non-country committees, you can't pay for that themselves. So we pay for the entire system and we pay for a whole bunch of other things that all come from global. And so this is really, um, you know, I think that we were just looking, we were just going through the budget and looking at the bills and you know those those battleground state calls for the first quarter were like forty five thousand dollars. So you know that's a lot. It's a big chunk of money, and we're sitting there and we're revamping the website so that it's e- more easily usable, more user friendly. User friendly also for um, for. Uh, Bye, Manifa. Bye, Manifa. For Austria, we had these sustaining donors for our own overhead, and it really made the difference. So kind of knowing that when you have a project, you don't have to start scrambling and reaching out and begging people to uh, to be able to do the projects. So that's why we'll know so that we want to have all 2022 sort of laid out in the heads so that we're not scrambling at the last moment to get these, a lot of these things done and grants and Facebook ads and all this kind of stuff. So I just right. wanted to make and that little pitch and please like carry it on to other people. Yeah, and the, the support that Democrats Abroad provides uh, covers materials like, um, I don't have it behind me because I've got this beautiful background, but some roll-ups that I made here last year that are vote from abroad that can be you know taken with you to events and plopped next to a voter registration table and stuff like that. So there's, even though Morocco is not an official country committee, we have been fortunate in receiving the same kind of support that country committee gets. Um, and so that's been really great. So with that, anything else? I just wanted to say to Colleen, if there's, if you know, for registration to be thinking about a knowing ahead of time, yeah? To be, get arranged. Uh, just one question. Uh, Jen? 
Yeah. Uh, so that uh, that fundraising initiative is is very is very excellent. You know, um, from time to time, you get um, a lot of notifications about people running for office. Uh, there's also issues about uh, some of the social justices going on, social injustices going on within the system. Um, a lot of uh, uh, very powerful thoughts that are being made. And right after that, it always accompanies, uh, you know, uh, can you contribute to this process? Yeah. Um, tangential to that. And uh, it would be good if we could have some kind of link that would allow people to vote because it all goes into the same pot. Uh, but it uh, certainly gives the impression that uh, people are, are championing a local activism initiative that we're involved in that affects the United States. Um, maybe uh, Brad and Robin uh, can talk to you about it a little bit more. They've, they've been sending out some activism statements. But the only thing I think they're missing is the ask. <laughs> so it would be great to have some asked. kind of link uh, where, you, where people could, you know, have an opportunity. To, yeah, the money ask, you know. It's, it's very, very straightforward. It's democratsabroad.org yeah. backslash donate. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Uh, and then uh, underneath that, there, there are very often specific targeted uh, uh, things that we're working on for example and it and could be kind of like a social media yeah. outreach one of the things that was really really effective the last go around i think we don't we put in close to a hundred thousand and we got back tons and tons of new members and more importantly we get new members when someone goes to vote from abroad and clicks the box that they want to become a, a member of Democrats Abroad. But the stat is, that's only about uh, between 25 and 30% of the folks click that box. So we've helped a hell of a lot more people vote than we are actually seeing become members. And yeah. th it's those kind of new voters that, that made the difference in places like Georgia, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, and not, last but not least, Arizona. So it's that kind of like just generalized targeting thing. One of the things I was just gonna comment on is that you and Elizabeth and Colleen have had a link on, on LinkedIn. And we've recently started using LinkedIn in a very targeted way of finding people who have roots in a specific country, a mistake, and we targeted them. Like for Virginia, we targeted uh, voters from Georgia like crazy um, last December. We went nuts with Georgia. Anybody who had anything, worked for a Georgia company, went to a Georgia university, um, any kind of anything like that, up on their LinkedIn page was, was um, information about uh, voting and going to vote from abroad. So we're, we've gotten a little more sophisticated about how to reach people who we just have never been able to reach before. And that, and that, mm. that is probably the go around. Donated once five euros to, to somebody, to a campaign, and then she found herself on all this listserv. It's really important yeah. to let people know that DA never does not, absolutely does not share their list with any campaign. And what it used to be is it used to be when you signed up, there was a box of campaigns and that would then allow people to get that information. But I think that's since been taken away because they realized it was such yep. bad policy. Yep. But so this is something that's really important. Like a lot of people will say, well, I don't want to be a member because I'll get be flooded with emails or I'll be flooded with suddenly campaign asks and stuff. And so it's just good to know that so, so you can repeat it to other people and say, you know what, you can donate to us and we will not sell your information. Elected in the places where the money's needed, right? Um, but you won't be flooded with tons of campaign asks. Well, on so I that think that's great, a good thing to remember. On that great point, I'm going to stop recording now.